Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to be talking about dial. So we're here on the Wiki API page as usual, and dial is fairly uh, straightforward in so much as that the uh, only uh, real function to add a dial is this dial add uh, function here that we're looking at on the Wiki page. Uh, with the addition of uh, some settings that you can apply using the touch setting or the mouse setting uh, and then the usual uh, move visible opacity and uh, viewport rec that you can apply to a node but we've covered that in a previous video so we're going to look at, be looking at the dial add and then we'll just uh, have a quick look at the touch and the mouse settings that apply uh, to dial so this should be quite a, a short video I think So let's just looking up the different for forms of the uh, the dial add uh, function here. Then in its uh, basic uh, form, you can see uh, you obviously need to give it an image, an x and y coordinates of where you want it to appear within your instrument, uh, how big it needs to be, so the width and the height of that particular image uh, that you're going to use for your dial, uh, and then uh, a callback, so um, a function uh, that gets called whenever the dial is operated and then you act upon the return values from uh, from this dial add um, function depending on if you move the dial uh, in a clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, direction. And then you can see here down in the arguments table and in this slightly different form here there's one additional um, argument here called acceleration you can see it's optional you don't have to put it in as you can see in the first uh, statement here um, but it gives you uh, the ability to um, scale up the speed as you rotate the dial faster so it gives a little bit more realistic operation um, as if you were whizzing around the encoder or uh, the knob or whatever it would be in, in, a, in a cockpit um, and you would get uh, more change in the particular thing that you're changing so whether it be a heading bug or um, you know the uh, altitude bug on a tape or whatever it was so let's dive um, straight into uh, the code then so what I've got here is just a little example set up with the dial um, add uh, function as you can uh, see here so I've give it an ID as per usual so we've called it dial underscore ID um, we use the dial add function and then we say we want to uh, use our switch.png image which we've been using for uh, quite a few of the other tutorials um, and we're going to position our image uh, 50 pixels in from the left 50 pixels uh, down from the top this should be quite familiar now if you followed uh, with the other video uh, tutorials um, and then the width and the height of our particular image, so 100 by 100, so it should appear in the middle of our little 200 by 200 instrument that we've set up for this tutorial. We've, we've set the acceleration, so we're using the full form of the um, of the function here. Uh, you can see I've just got it uh, in the comment just above there, just so that we can see uh, what the individual uh, arguments are. So this acceler uh, acceleration here, we've currently got set to 1, so that's the equivalent of not having it in there at all. Um, all that does essentially is it just uh, it just calls this callback more often. Um, so if you put a 5 in there, it would call that callback 5 times um, for the equivalent uh, amount of turn. Um, so it just provides like a level of uh, acceleration uh, if you're moving the if you're moving the dial uh, faster than a certain speed. But you still, if you want to move it slowly, still have the resolution to just do the one click at a time, and it drops back down out of this acceleration mode. I'll show you that in operation in a minute. And then the name of the dial callback. Um, so I've just called it literally that dial underscore callback, and there's our function up here for dial underscore callback. So in this particular example, our dial callback function, you can see here returns um, uh, a value, I've called it DIR, short for direction, so it's essentially returning um, direction information, so that in the form of a 1 for clockwise operation and a minus 1 for counterclockwise operation. So if you move the dial in a clockwise um, direction, it should return 1 and when you move the dial in an anti-clockwise direction it should return minus one so fairly straightforward it's um, consistent with uh, other controls uh, within Air Manager that you do like that so um, when we do the hardware dials they're in fact exactly the same and so you can see how you could set up for an instrument you could use the hardware um, 
encoder um, add and a and a soft dial add as as in the case of this one uh, because they both return uh, one and minus one you can call the same function basically from each of those uh, adds if you want to so that whether you move the 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 soft uh, dial or you move the actual external hardware dial they still give the same result I in this particular case you can see we're printing and we're also sending a command um, to the explain sim here so we're just going to um, demo that very quickly in its basic form I haven't got any of these touch on mouse settings on yet I've got those commented out for the moment so you can see in this um, very simple um, callback that we've got here we've just got an if statement that says if the direction is one so in other words if it's clockwise print clockwise to our console over here just so that we can see that it's working um, uh, and at the same time or, or just after the clockwise please send the explain command sim autopilot heading up so that's our heading bug uh, control and then obviously if the direction is minus one please do the opposite so print counterclockwise uh, to the console over here and send the command to the sim sim autopilot heading down so what that actually means if we pull the uh, if we pull the sim up there is where we've got our heading bug here you can see me adjusting it uh, here is those commands will will send this uh, going up or going down depending on um, what command we actually issue so let's go ahead and run our instrument now so we've got it we've got it running here then you can see there's our switch image so if we command the bearing in mind we've got the acceleration set to one here at the moment so this is uh, as if you were not using acceleration at all we could take that out completely and that would be the equivalent of uh, it being one there so let's get the image of the sim now let's just watch the heading bug there as we click there so I'm just going to click it once there you can see just see the heading bug move ever so slightly up and then in the opposite direction down so we'll go up up and you can see here in the console here we're getting the response to our thing so we did a we did a uh, a clockwise a counterclockwise and then we did three clockwises so we'll do a few more clockwise 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 you can see as it uh, as it goes there uh, each time you click uh, clockwise counterclockwise clockwise counterclockwise so fairly straightforward the operation so let's concentrate back on the the bug now uh, for a minute and you can see now as I run there the consoles churning out clockwise is there you can probably just see and I'm and I've got my finger permanently on the button now you can see the dials rotating around there and the bug is scrolling around there but you can see I'm having to hold that down for quite a long time there to get that bug to come all the way around again and obviously it would be exactly the same going in a counterclockwise direction all the way back around there so that's where the acceleration comes in um, we can up that number which we're going to do now and we can see the effects of uh, what that does um, to the bug so let's bring it around there to uh, west pro approximately where we started uh, stop our instrument there for a minute and we're just going to modify this acceleration number let's try putting 10 in there as a number so what that basically means that will call, that will call when once we start getting into uh, what air manager deems as the acceleration mode when we've said that we want to move that dial a little bit faster so in other words we've clicked and we've held on that for a while and uh, so that's the equivalent of you to whizzing whizzing the dial the physical dial round a little bit quicker you actually want to uh, give 10 of these callbacks so in other words send 10 commands to uh, the sim to actually uh, move that bug so we should we should see it, it come around uh, um, in bigger chunks so let's have a look and see how that actually works so you can see I still maintain the individual control of the individual uh, click just as we did before so no change there but if I click and hold now you can see after a short period of time once it deems that I'm in acceleration mode Oh, it's going around there at a fair rate of knots now because it, it's doing those 10 callbacks each time. So you can play around with that number, um, 5, 10. Uh, if you did something, uh, you know, big like 30, you'd see it really would um, really would hurt all around there. There you go. Whee. Probably a bit too fast. So... Um, you can play around with that number to get uh, the nice sort of response that you want depending on the uh, the control. This particular one's a, a 
heading pug so you probably saw 10 maybe a little bit less than 10 is maybe the appropriate value for this one but it might be different depending on uh, what it is that you're trying to control so that's the basic form of the dial add um, function as I said fairly straightforward now we're just going to have a quick look at the uh, the mouse and the touch setting so I think I'm set up for well we are I'm set up for mouse here at the moment so um, we'll go ahead and do the mouse settings first and then we'll we'll jump onto the the couple of touch settings that we've got there so similar to um, I think what we looked at um, let's bring up the um, let's bring up the the uh, the page here um, mouse setting and see what applies to dial but similar to what we've looked at for um, switch uh, and button already you can see there's a there's a few different um, properties that you can apply uh, and so for dial when you see in this applies to column here for dial you can use the cursor left the cursor right which we've looked at previously when we look, looked at switch and additionally you can see also for dial here this one only applies to dial is click rotate now what that says is the number of degrees rotating of the dial image on mouse click so let's go ahead and uh, have a look at that very quickly um, I don't think we need the sim open at the moment okay so let's first of all just have a look at the um, cursor left and the cursor right in fact, you can see we'll just do the cursor left just to show you. Um, so now um, you probably know what's going to happen here. If you've watched the um, the switch video, you can see that you can use this custom uh, 32 by 32 pixel. And it's important to note, as I've said in previous videos, that that image needs to be 32 pixels by 32 pixels. It can't be anything else, otherwise it won't work. Um, I've created this little arrow up uh, PNG so now you see when we're on cursor left see cursor right has still got the default uh, curved arrow with a, a plus on it when I go to the left uh, my cursor left has been replaced with this arrow up that um, I've generated and you can see when you do the same with your um, cursor right command um, the same will happen with the cursor right so you can do cursor right and cur oh sorry um, yeah the down arrow will appear um, as I've selected there up arrow and a down arrow and then the last setting uh, for mouse setting is um, click rotate now what click rotate does is click rotate will adjust the rotation angle of the um, the image here for every click so you can see the default is 10 so when I was clicking before one little click was moving uh, the dial uh, 10 degrees you can just see that it's moving uh, about 10 degrees for each uh, thing if we were to count them you'd see uh, they'd add up to a full uh, 360 all the way around there so if we go ahead and save our instrument now we've we've changed it to 45 what you'll see will happen here is when I click it jumps around a full 45 degrees uh, the image there so um, round about it's going to come around to about here now and then there and then I'm over here and then so there you can see that it's 45 degrees at a time so fairly straightforward you can just adjust uh, how much you want the dial to adjust if you're not happy with the default 10 then over to the touch settings then if we just change uh, over to touch control now in air manager and then have a look at the touch controls again um, if we just whiz back to the um, wiki page here we go to the touch settings and you can see the ones that apply to dial uh, in the applies to column again here are the show highlight and the rotate tick and you can see they both apply to switch so we've shown these previously on switch but we'll just look at them again um, here um, and so the first one um, we'll just do the show highlight one first so the show hi highlight one um, the default is true so obviously that basically means that um, whenever um, you touch the control as I'm doing here you see you get the bl you get the blue highlight uh, comes up over the control but you can if you want to uh, turn that off um, you can change this to um, whoops you can change that having a mad there we go you can change it to false and um, 
now when you touch you'll see here okay so I'm touching now you can just see the box come up there but uh, nothing um, no blue box appearing okay so that's show highlight and then the other one very simply is rotate tick what that basically does is that changes the default amount of um, rotation that we see or, or, or it, it will change every time it wants to do a callback how many degrees you have to actually move your finger in terms of an arc around the image before it will uh, generate uh, the callback so the default is 20 as you see I've written in the uh, comment there we're going to change it to 120 so let's just have a look very quickly at the 20 before I do uh, uncomment that one and you can see if you just watch the the uh, callbacks in the console now I'm on the I'm on the thing so as I'm moving my uh, finger around the uh, thing you can see quite a few callbacks there because every 20 degrees I'm moving that that will generate a uh, in fact it's probably not fair because we've we've got the acceleration on 30 so let's just turn that down to one again There you go, so and then another twenty and then another twenty. You get a little you get a callback for about every twenty degrees. Now if we change that uh, touch control to hundred and twenty, we should get a lot less uh callbacks. So there I am and we're gonna move it. Let me start to move quite a bit further before we get a call back there oh, oh. excuse me ah oh, there we go so now I'm having to move it quite a lot and you just get a call back every now and again and then going back in the opposite direction anti-clockwise anti-clockwise so I'm going to do about one full revolution and I get about three callbacks obviously because it's 120 degrees so have a little play around with those numbers anyway um, it may affect the it may give you a slightly better control I found that if you up those numbers a little bit uh, on some of the touch uh, rotations it it means it's not quite so sensitive and it's easier to actually get to uh, the final number or the final switch position that you actually want to do um, by adjusting that rotate click so that you don't just get lots of uh, callbacks all the time uh, and it keeps making the, the the result jump around a little bit i think that concludes um the um, video for dial as i said fairly straightforward not really much to talk about other than the basic dial add commands um, join me again for another video soon thanks bye